In the depths of an Oklahoma night, while America celebrated its independence with fireworks and festivities, 15-year-old Dave learned that some predators prefer to hunt when everyone else is looking at the sky. What began as his first taste of freedom, a night alone in his rural home, became a terrifying encounter with something that shouldn't exist. Something that stood seven feet tall and watched him with intelligent yellow eyes. Something that spent hours circling his home, dragging its claws across metal walls, and teaching him that being alone isn't always the adventure it seems. Dave grew up in the country in northeast Oklahoma, in a small town named Watts, and the adjacent town of Westville. He had an encounter that, at the time, he could only describe as a werewolf. Now, after years of research, he has come to call it a dogman. It was July 4th, 2000. Dave remembered the date because he was excited. He got to stay overnight by himself in the house for the first time in his life. His stepdad and mom were staying at his grandparents' house and offered him the option to stay behind. He was 15 years old. He had long hair and was a die-hard heavy metal fan. He had just gotten his first guitar. And now that he had the chance to stay home alone without anyone complaining about the volume, he wasn't going to turn it down. His parents allowed him to smoke cigarettes, figuring it was better than other things he could be getting into at that time in his life, so he did. Around noon, his parents left and the afternoon and evening went by uneventfully. Dave was enjoying himself, feeling grown up. He worked on playing ACDC's Hell's Bells and the Star Spangled Banner as he watched the sunset through the blinds. His excitement grew. He had stayed alone for hours during the day, but being a thrill seeker, this overnight stay was set to be intense. He only wished he had known to be careful what he wished for. The house was a single wide mobile home with an acre cleared in the back, but the front was nothing but trees. There were no streetlights. Dave's stepdad's brother lived next door in another single wide, but he was gone that night as well. The driveway was on the right side of the house and on the other side, more trees. The back porch, if you could call it that, was just a large spool core for electrical cable. When the sun finally set, Dave and his dog were alone. It was almost midnight, and the distant crackle of fireworks from neighboring farms had subsided, leaving behind an unnatural quiet. The night air was cool against his skin as he stepped out onto the makeshift back porch to smoke a cigarette. The taste of tobacco was sharp in his mouth, a simple pleasure that would soon turn to ash. The dog, a small mutt with more bravery than size, stood at the door, her ears perked and her body tense. She growled low and steady, her eyes fixed on the trees. Dave followed her gaze but saw nothing. He took another drag of his cigarette, the ember flaring briefly before the dog's growl grew more insistent, turning into a whine. A chill wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it the faint scent of damp earth and something else, something musky and unfamiliar. The smell lingered, thick and wet, almost like rotting leaves after a rain. Dave wrinkled his nose. Then from the depths of the woods, a low growl rumbled, sending a shiver down his spine. He froze, the cigarette still clenched between his fingers as his eyes darted toward the sound. The shadows in the trees shifted, long and distorted, twisting as if alive in the faint moonlight. Dave squinted, trying to make sense of what he was seeing. His heart began to pound in his chest, each beat a thunderous thud in his ears. His palms grew slick with sweat. Then two yellow eyes blinked at him from the darkness, intelligent, deliberate. They weren't the eyes of a dog or any animal he had seen before. They were something else, something far worse. A wolf? No, it was far too big. A bear? No, bears were rare in Oklahoma, and this stood differently. The creature's eyes were positioned in a way that suggested it had to be seven or eight feet tall. Its groaning and growling turned from curious to frighteningly angry. The moment dragged on, each second stretching into an eternity. Dave's chest constricted, his breath catching in his throat. The cigarette dangled forgotten from his lower lip, still lit. He backed away, step by step, never breaking eye contact. His breath came in shallow gasps, his fingers trembling. As he reached the door, his hand fumbled for the handle, and he slipped inside, shutting it quickly behind him. The dog was already inside, whimpering and cowering near the couch. He went from window to window, checking every opening, making sure each was shut, locked, and covered. At the last window, he saw the eyes again, closer now, just beyond the tree line. His throat tightened, and his stomach churned as he quickly checked the lock 
and slammed the curtain shut. His mother didn't allow firearms in the house, or if there were any, he didn't know about them. He grabbed the biggest kitchen knife he could find, the handle cold and unfamiliar in his sweaty palm. The dog lay trembling at his feet, her small body pressed tightly against him as if trying to disappear. The next few hours were intense as they heard it, thud, thud, thud. The creature was circling the home, its heavy footsteps reverberating through the floor. Each second dragged on, stretching time into something unbearable. At one point, there was scratching, like claws raking against the metal siding. Dave's vision blurred, his throat tight as tears threatened to spill. He gripped the knife tighter, as if the cold steel in his hand was his only anchor to sanity. This thing wasn't just hunting, it was playing with him, savoring his fear. A sudden silence filled the house so complete it made Dave's ears ring. He held his breath, hoping, praying it had finally left. But just as quickly as it came, the silence was shattered by another thud, closer this time. The heavy steps circled again, dragging something behind them. The landline was in another room, but he didn't dare move. His mind raced, his thoughts jumbled. Was this really happening? What had he done to deserve this? A deep regret settled in his stomach for wanting to stay home alone. He pulled the dog closer, hiding them both under the blanket. He waited, praying it would get bored and leave. Eventually the noises stopped, and an hour or so later, the first rays of dawn filtered through the curtains. Exhausted, Dave's grip on the knife loosened, and he fell asleep on the floor, feeling the warmth of the morning light against his face. His parents came home around 10 in the morning and found them asleep with the knife nearby. They asked what had happened and Dave told them, expecting disbelief or ridicule. Instead, they went outside and found deep imprints in the mud and dirt around the house, along with five light but unmistakable streaks across the metal, like fingers tracing across a surface in a deliberate gesture. Dave never had another experience like it, but that's little comfort when the memory still haunts him. Whatever stalked him that night wasn't some mindless creature. It knew exactly what it was doing. It savored his fear, every moment calculated, deliberate. This wasn't just an animal, it was something far worse. Intelligent, malicious. It knew how to inflict terror, and that makes it far more dangerous than any ordinary predator. Years later, unable to shake the feeling of those eyes watching him, Dave finally decided to share his story with DeadNet Studios, hoping someone else might understand what he encountered. Even now, when the moon hangs high and the woods fall silent, Dave can't help but think about that night. It wasn't a nightmare. It wasn't his imagination. Something's out there. If you've seen it, or something like it, you're not alone. DeadNet Studios is listening. We document encounters like Dave's, piecing together the truth about what waits in the shadows of our world. If you've had a similar experience, reach out to us at deadnetstudios at gmail.com. Share your story. You never know who else is out there watching. Yeah.